Hey, hey. Oh, oh my God. I'm just, I'm freaking out trying to figure out how do I get on this thing. <laughs> I was trying to invite you and it was giving me a hard time. But I'm I need so to. And I got a lighting kit and everything and nothing works. <laughs> <laughs> I, are we live now? Oh my. We're, we're live, live now. Yeah. Thank you for joining me. You missed. I gave you a real nice introduction, talking through your career, all of the <laughs> things. And also letting folks know that we're not going to talk about it, your specific projects because we're here to talk about the strike. Well, I can't talk about anything having to do with our traditional employers. Pardon me. There's another device I was trying to get to work. Um, you know, the studios that we're unfortunately in a, uh, in a fight for our lives with, because uh, I, I do believe uh, this, is, this is a real, real uh, crucial time. Uh, and what we fight for now will determine our future as artists, as actors, you know, as, as, as a middle class. Um, it's a middle class union. So I can talk about, you know, independent things. I can talk about myself, <laughs> an actor talking about themselves, how original. Um, I can talk about Latino rebels, <laughs> you know. Yeah, buenvenido. Thank you so much for joining us and being a friend of the organization. Um, I guess I just want to hear from you, like, what was it like in the lead up to the strike? Sort of how did the how did it unfold for you? How did it feel for you kind of as we were getting closer? I know the WGA has been on strike for a long time, but SAG joined relatively more recently. Kind of what was, how was the feeling among actors, among Latino actors as it was, as it was getting close? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, for actors in general, it's, it's, it was something that from my standpoint was long overdue. And I come from a faction that has considered uh, militant simply for wanting to do what the union was designed to do, which was fight for better working conditions and wages. Uh, fight so that we didn't have to be hobbyists or the children of very wealthy people to be actors. Um, so you could raise a family so that you could, you know, hopefully buy a home, have a home. Um, this, this struggle right now will make a certain number of us homeless, unfortunately. Um, how did I get involved in, and are you talking about this specific uh, thing or how did I get involved in unions in general? Let's um, do this thing, but then I'd love to hear about unions in general too. Let's do this. Well, thing. this one, uh, we, we knew it was coming and we knew that uh, AI is a very big subject. Um, it's an issue that, um, that we've been kind of concerned about and we're watching the writers and what's been going on with them and they, they're they very directly uh, affected by this and we always felt that well this is not you know th this can't be happening because how can you how can you have a computer fulfill a, a job that a human being does especially an artist now it's one thing to create widgets and to you know write copy for a commercial buy this buy that you know ai has worked out very well for that but there's something about the human condition that cannot be so easily replaced and even if what we're hearing now certain studio is laying off a third of their workforce yet hiring very expensive ai artists you know half a million dollars a pop my point is they're eventually going to do the job that actors do why not skip all the expense and hire actors to do it you know an actor is worth what they're worth by the way many people think all actors make you know hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and uh, you know even millions and many millions that's a very very small percentage we have to remember this is a working class union this is the the big big stars don't really need a union. They have so much clout that their conditions, their needs are met, believe me. Now, why are their needs met? Well, because they supply something that the seller, you know, the producer of the studio wants, which is star power, which is the ability to get their fans to show up in droves, which makes them money. So it's a deal. If you have a bunch of stars that will show up for you, you'll get something that reflects that popularity, that, that, effort that you put in for many many years before you became an overnight sensation so this is something we've been worried about but in my opinion it's something and I, again i ran for president twice and this is the only thing i've ever run for president for because i felt it was that close to home our faction that i mentioned before um was called 
militant because we really were ready to fight. And I think that this struggle that we're having now is, is due to not having fought hard enough in the past. Not having, you know, accepted mediocre deals where then the union turns around and says, look what we got you. Look at these increases. Look at this. Look over here. Look over here. But don't look at what you lost. Don't look at what it costs you. Don't look at now you have to work harder to make less money. You know, there's a way to, 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 to present statistics in, in, a, in a way that's misleading. And I feel like at a, after a certain point, our union became very corporatized. And it became about what every other big institution becomes about, which is delivering its constituents to the highest bidders. You know, keeping peace in the, oh, we don't want to strike. Of course we don't want to strike. I don't want to strike. I want our producers to make money. I want the studios to make lots and lots of money. Just don't leave out your partners. Just don't make it at the expense of the human condition. Because as you know, if you leave some of us to our own devices, we'll work for free for the attention, who we'll work so that you love us, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's not how you create a, a, an industry that has, you know, people that can make a living and has lasting impact. Our, what we provide is hard to quantify, number one. We're not widgets. So we prov we're the ghosts in the machine. And anytime you, you, you gain something, you have to fight hard. Now, I have to, just to ramble on a little bit, a little history. The union was formed in 1933 after the studios at the time in response to the Great Depression, which was not so great for the average person, but great for those who could take advantage of it. They said the industry would shut down. The movie business was over as you knew it if the actors did not all across the board take a 50% pay cut. And there were some actors, very brave actors and very popular actors at the time that said, now, hang on a minute. We don't, we don't agree with that. And they formed a union so that they could have a bargaining uh, body, you know, uh, a way to negotiate in collectively so that no one person would have their job lost, you know, this strength in, in unity. So we created this union, they created it really, our forefathers and mothers in order to protect the least powerful, in order to provide a floor for those that were being taken advantage of, that were being worked very, very many hours. And then, you know, you have very little bit of a life. If you work 15, 16 hours a day on a set sometimes, what time do you have to go home to be with your kids, to pay your bills, to do the, you know, the errands, to do your laundry? I mean, there's so many things. People think acting is so glamorous. And it's not, I can tell you, it's not glamorous. What it's again, it's the illusion, the facade of glamour. So we know that at this point, there are a few things that we really, really, really are sticklers upon. That is AI, because it could eventually make, you know, replace so many of us. Let's take our background actors, speaking of, you know, those who don't have a lot of power, but are needed in numbers. They want to take the image of a background actor, record it, and then pay them for that day, per se. Maybe a couple of days or a week, but then be able to use that image in perpetuity. And not pay, that person then loses 80% or 90% of the work they were, you know, depending upon. Um, there are other things like the hours that it takes, you know, we, we lost portal to portal, meaning we were getting paid when we left the house to when we got back home. Well, that was all traded away. So what we're seeing now is our union realizing that we have to fight for all the things we lost before. So when we ask for an 11% increase, that seems ridiculous. That's because we got two and a half percent before when we should have gotten three to five. You know, this is a result of lackluster leadership, in my opinion, in the past. Yes, I'm saying that as someone who ran for president twice and was willing to not be compromised, not be bought out, not be, oops, there's my door, come on in. Um, the point is you won't get anything unless you fight for it. And we decided not to fight um, when we should have fought. So that's basically what it all boils down to. We also well, wanna share in the revenues that all these streaming platforms are making. We don't want, excuse me a second, I'm alive. We don't want to become Spotify musicians. 
I'm sorry to say that. You can have a billion views and maybe get 30 grand or something like that. A billion views. Somehow these big companies, these big platforms make all the money and the artists are left fighting for crumbs. So this is what we're fighting about. And I'll shut so up for a No, you're doing good. It's a really good explainer. And I feel like a lot of people don't know some of the basics of it. So thank you for that. You know, one of the things I heard you say was like, you're in the, what's been labeled the like extreme version part of the union. And I'm curious like where you get your fight from, you know, you talked a little bit about maybe having a union background. I think of that, I'm a Chicana, I come from a union family and really feel like I'm middle class because of that background. And so I want to hear from you, your, your union, what do they call them? Bona fides? Bona Bona fides, right? My CV or my, uh, my props. The bottom line is this. When I was a kid, I had my mom was the number one union organizer for the International Ladies Garment Workers Union. And I, I don't need any help now at this point. We're good, thanks. A friend of mine heroically came over to help me with my technical problems. We're live, it's all good. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't get in front of my life. That's dangerous. <laughs> anyway, fellow actor too. Um, the bottom line, she worked for the International Ladies Garment Workers Union, barely knowing English. She organized Latino, uh, Anglo, and Black African-American seamstresses to stand up for their rights, to stand up for themselves, and to have dignity at the workplace, to not be just chattel. You know, in the old days without unions, you know, people were worked quite often to death. You know, factories burned down because of the conditions. Just to save a few bucks, we lost quite a few lives. We were, you know, my mom, I could hear her throughout most of my childhood talking to other people on the phone, whether it was about a boss or a boyfriend or a wife that was, a, whenever somebody was being abusive, she was like, no, 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 you don't put up with that. And that's, I think, where I get my genetic uh, predisposition to fight for true justice. Now, sometimes movements get taken over, they get, they become corporatized and they say justice on the outside, but there may be a Trojan horse for other agendas. That's the kind of person that I believe I am. That's where I'm a Latino rebel in the sense that I will fight against being forced to do things I don't want to do. I don't feel I should do. I don't want to compromise my freedom to choose on a variety of issues. I don't want to be brainwashed. And I feel like as actors, you know, we're used to brainwash other people if we're not careful. So it, it behooves us to really know what we're talking about, to really go deep and not just read your lines, not just read a script. So that's where I, I feel like we can all use a little bit of stop and look around and realize how much of what you think is true may not be. Many of the things we fought for, I was a certain political, I was of a certain political bent, now I'm of neither because I see that the right and the left, the right wing and the left wing are both necessary for the bird to take flight. The minute you have one attacking the other just for being or identifying or saying, you know, you can't, you have to be canceled because I don't like the way you think, we are destroying ourselves. You have to protect the freedom to speak your mind, especially if it's not popular. You don't need freedom of speech to protect popular speech. You need it to protect unpopular but important speech. You know, that's an interesting point. I feel like I'm willing to debate anybody on their ideas, but your, our, your ideas cannot be, we cannot debate who is a human, who counts, who gets basic human rights. And if that's where we're starting, and I feel like we've devolved in a lot of our civil society to be like, these people don't count as people, this group doesn't count as people, and that feels really frustrating and scary to me. Um, and so, what I want to ask you about next is really about specifically the Latino population. You know, I've been interviewing people striking who are WGA and who are SAG-AFTRA. And one of the things I've been struck by is just like how big some of these issues are for us, whether it's being expected to be able to translate stuff into Spanish for free um, or just like not being in, having generational wealth, like having your parents to support you to be able to be part of the industry. Um, how do you see that these issues that you and the other actors and the writers too are fighting for, how do they specifically um, affect Latinos in the Well, I'll tell you on several issues and I hope I can be concise. The fact of the matter is it's all related. 
Everything is related. You know, when people go, oh, sorry, uh, I, I have to leave now. I, I don't like being political. I don't want to get political. I go, well, you can leave, but everything's political. Yeah. Everything's related. And I'll tell you how. We as actors provide content. We are, we interpret emotions. We organize the emotions that make other people identify with us, that make other people care about our characters and the stories that we're in. So it behooves us to pick projects that we are spiritually and emotionally in line with that we are you know that that aligns with us i don't want i don't want to just do anything as a latino i can't tell you how many jobs i've walked away from because they misrepresented us and at a certain point i had to break my own rule because i said i'll never play a drug dealer well guess what if the drug dealer has more than one dimension if the drug dealer isn't there just to be hated if I could show something else, then okay, I'll do it. Because why should I not play a drug dealer, but any other race or, or, or Anglo person can play one and, you know, become Scarface, you know, let's just say, right? How can he get like all that, you know, there's so much work, you know, the cartels are very, very big thing yeah i did ozark I, I played dell in oops in a certain show that was very popular and he was a bad guy but i don't i don't play him as a bad guy because he's latino right he did bad things because if he didn't something much worse would happen to his family and they see this is my own character's inner world you see what i'm saying yeah. so hell if that if I, my character would let that happen if i bring you to the organization and you betray my bosses you're done and that's right. you know these are the things that i justify my characterizations yeah i play bad guys because guess what we do have bad guys i'm not interested in whitewashing latinos mm -hmm. but i'm also not interested in just being used to bludgeon our image into the ground so for, for me it's important to have balance to show both sides of the equation, to show that not all good people are are are, are saints. They have bad moments, and not all bad people, have, you know, are completely bad. They have good moments. No one is, you know, there's yin and yang in the world. So as actors, I have to watch what I consume or what I portray for you to consume. I want to make sure it's not just, you know, making you dumb, because if you haven't noticed, our society has gotten dumbed down as a society. And we will consume whatever's put in front of us, unfortunately, for some folks. Popular culture is not, if you look around, go to the supermarket, see how big the organic and health food section is compared to the rest of it. It's tiny. And that's for a reason because the majority of people don't know they don't watch what they consume whether it's through here through here or through here we're not conscious and we should be and that's why artists are important because no matter how commercial anything is there's always a few that make you think there's always a few that make you think about eternity there's a great quote that i remember saying this is high art by its illusions foreshadows uh, um let me see. No, the, the high mission or the mission of high art, let's say, is through its illusions to make people think about the thought of eternity, to crystallize the emotions, ah, to crystallize the emotions of time into the thought of eternity. In other words, to get us out of our everyday. You know, entertainment doesn't just help us escape, but it can also help us go in. You ever seen a movie that makes you cry, but after that cry, you feel free? You feel like you've learned something? You've traveled somewhere. You've gone somewhere emotionally. AI cannot do that. AI will never do that. But I don't want our industry, you know, chieftains to kid themselves and, and destroy our craft and our ability to make a living before they figure that out, before they AI themselves out of a job. Because one thing that has, I think a lot of people don't realize is these executives could think they'd be cutting costs by, you know, uh, making computers do our jobs, but AI can replace them too. Just remember that. So you talk about, uh, you know, the things that need to change. And I feel like we're in this hot labor summer. People are organizing. The writers have been on strike. I think it's day 101 today. Um, nuts. What, what, what is going to have to change to get us Latinos the representation we want in Hollywood, but also to get the writers and actors the support and freedom they have to, they have, to have to be able to create that type of representation that we as audience members are so hungry for? You got to show 
well. Mm. I heard an interview of somebody saying, you know what, no matter, you know, wars are won by folks who show up. Campaigns are won by those who show up. You got to show up. You got to pay attention. And no, I'm not ignoring someone who said I'm ignoring them. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the point is we have big battles. Society as a, is at a crossroads. I can get into very, very many issues right now and blow your mind about what I've learned. But unfortunately, that would put me way out into the fringe and would attract cancel culture. So I have to be very careful what I talk about. Can you believe that? I have to be careful about talking about the union because I'm on the board and they've passed all these, you know, secrecy things or you can't talk about some issues or, I mean, it's, it's like, we're supposed to be a member run institution that is run by those who run us. In other words, by our staff, we're supposed to be a, a member run country. In other words, a citizen run country, but we're run by those who own our elected leaders, those who pay for their campaigns. So as Latinos, to answer your question, God, I talk too much, I'm sorry. As, Lat as Latinos, we have to identify that we are part of the human race, a, sub, a subculture within the culture of America, within the culture of humanity. But unless we put aside our differences and find out what we have in common, we're not going to have enough strength to make a difference, to, 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 have, to, 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 to make a measurable effect on, 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 uh, on the things that people count. Our dollars, we go to movies and we watch TV more than our population. We over-index when it comes to consuming garbage food and garbage entertainment. I have to say it, okay? I have to say that. So what can we do? We can pick better fare. We can watch for the movies, for the acting, for the, the cinema. Be better customers. Be better human beings. Don't just be satisfied for the, the happy or, or the, the quick meal, okay? I don't want to single out any one, you know, fast food culture. If you're going to eat fast food, eat good fast food. If you're going to watch entertainment, make sure it's not eating the, the, the minds of, of your children. I mean, you know, let's think, let's think about what our kids are listening to today. What we're listening to. I mean, I, I, I'm like, I can't believe it. Every generation can't believe the one before, but it's pretty out in the open now. Some stuff is just downright anti-human, anti-people, you know? It's, it's, just, it's about murdering, it's about degrading, whether it's women or, or, or honest people. It's just, come on, man, wake up. Wake up to what's happening around you. Slap yourself in the face before reality does. So as Latinos, we need to organize. We need to show up. We need to vote with our pocketbooks. We need to go watch movies. You know, there was one I was in recently that I can't promote. I'm the first Latino in that thing. Well, we got bumped off of screens and certain other things by others. I can just hope that they didn't make a mistake by hiring me. And one way that they might see that is by seeing the numbers of Latinos that normally go see their movies get up a little bit higher. If, it don't, if, they, if we don't show up more for our own, they're not going to make stuff for us, for us. They're not going to include us. There's a thousand other races. There's a thousand other, you know, minorities that have to be included. And, you know, if we don't stand up and fight properly for ourselves, you know, there's a way to do things. You can be loud and boisterous and ratchet. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying write letters. I'm saying show up. I'm saying, you know, let your voice be heard in a respectful way that says, you know what, that portrayal, that's not okay with us. We, we can't support that. And if we come at them with reason, if we come at them with logic and with love and respect, they have no choice but to return it back. They have no, and if they don't, they have no one else but themselves to blame when over a quarter of their audiences says, no, thank you. Yeah, it's interesting. I've read statistics that we do actually over index. We do show up more for stuff that we're in. And but I ain't lying, girl. I ain't lying. <laughs> but we have to know what it is. It has to be promoted to us, right? If there's no marketing budget or if the marketing budget doesn't mention those things, um, it gets more tricky. Um, but I don't want to end up down note. I you're right. You're right. You're right. I'm going to stick in one little thing. It may be self-serving to say, but I did not see myself in a lot of certain promotions. And as the main antagonist person, I was wondering why that was. 
And I was wondering if our own people said, would say, hey, where's our boy? Right. So and like, or, oh, no, right, that you're in it. And so, that's, so can, I'm sorry for interrupting, but. <laughs> well, what I wanted to say, though, is let's think about for a second, if you got to pick what happens after this strike, if you could envision a new, a different Hollywood, a different entertainment industry, what would be the vision of that? Like, what's your what's your hope? What's the sort of promised land that it may be not one strike will never get us there, but like, what are we moving towards? I'm a person who believes that equilibrium is very important, whether it's of your blood pH or, you know, political views, uh, you know, food intake, balance. We want to see people make a living so that we can spend money on your products. We, we don't want slavery. We don't want mental slavery. We don't want abuse. We don't want the super, super, super rich basically pretending that they're giving us so much when in fact they're just cornering our markets and, and stealing from us our opportunity to be organic, to take our food away, to take our options away. But people pretend to be good. So what I'd love to see is a society that gets rid of its real enemies, or at least identifies them and resists against them because we're, we're, we're designed to fight each other. We're all, you know, men against women, you know, uh, uh, gays against straight, transgenders and gays are, we're having an issue at one point. You know, every letter in the alphabet against us and we're not looking at who's pulling the strings or who's pulling the strings. Mm -hmm. I believe that we have enemies that we don't even know exist and they play us for fools. And I, I don't wish ill even upon them. I wish love on my enemies because if you are part of the society that wants to control and kill off X amount of people in our society and doesn't care, then you're sick. You need help. You know, you need to be reconnected to the human race. You, we need to realize what it is to be human. And that way we can have AI but it'll stay artificial it'll never replace us we can work together with it we won't just have any excuse to get rid of people who work an honest living if you want to get, get rid of folks get rid of the con artists you know i was told by a great latino of all people but a great man that happens to be latino an artist carlos santana one of his favorite quotes became one of mine there's only two kinds of people in the world he told me artists and con artists. Mm -hmm. And if we, if we just support the true artists in the world, it doesn't mean you have to have an art. It means you're, you're, you're for real. You're not fronting in the art of living, in the art of loving. We only have so much time on this planet. Figure out why you were born. Figure out what it is to be human and help each other. You know, that's what I would like to see. I know it sounds like a dream, but if we as actors can have a, a, a modicum of the share of the screening revenue, which is in the future, that's what's happening, then we'll be happy because we know we're not going to watch them make all the money while we sit here and sink in, in, in you know, in, in infamy or ignominy. Like, we want to be partners. At least we want to have a meaningful participation in the industry that we're helping create and we're helping that you know make bigger there was something I, I wanted to say before that was um has to do with oh, oh yes getting back to union stuff let me tell you how they work okay when vhs came out they told us we don't know if we're gonna make money we, this is a new technology we don't know how to make money on it and uh you know it may or may not we, we need you to cut us a break we can't you know we can't cut you into this until we've made money well they made money. They made a lot of money. And finally, when they were ready to give us a break, CDs came in, or DVDs, right? DVDs, oh, well, you know, no, no, before that was cable, cable TV. Oh, well, we don't know, cable TV, it's a new medium. We don't know if we can make money, I, you know, there's, you know. And then after that, it was, uh, oh, the, you know, the economy's down, you know. There's always an excuse not to pay the human being. There's always an excuse to squeeze us. <laughs> And came, you know, uh, streamers and networks, and we don't know, you know, video on demand. We don't know. Well, we're used to that trick. We're tired. We're not falling for it anymore. If you don't know that you can make money, why are you investing in it? Why are you in this business? Get out of here. Let some people who know that they can make money produce for us. We don't need insecurity. 
We don't need to pay the price of your supposed insecurity. If you make, if you make more money, we get a little, little more. Believe me, they're not, we're not asking 50-50. We're not even asking for a tenth. We're asking for a sliver of the pie when we're the ghosts in the machine. Believe me, if they could do it without us, they would have. Well, and maybe trying to now. And streaming's been out for 10 years, right? It's been more than 10 years since. Come uh, on, somebody's making a lot of money. And somebody has sold us down the river. And I do believe we as a union have been compromised from within. But it's hard to point fingers and name names. It's like our country. I believe our country has been compromised from within, from both sides of this political spectrum. And I think people are waking up for that now, to that now. That's why I'm backing a certain political candidate that comes from a very old dynasty, very famous dynasty that uh, who lost their lives. They lost their lives because of what they did for us or who knows. But I'm backing someone who I believe can protect us better than anyone else out there. So I'll leave you guys to figure that out at some point. I'll come out much more publicly about that. But if you have to know, I'll tell you. Anyway. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time today, for dreaming with us and sharing the problems, and walking us through some of the ways that as audience members and fan members that we can be part of the solution. I just so thank you for your time for your leadership. Um, it has been a real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you. Bye-bye.